Welcome back to my channel and happy December. I feel like it's been probably since August since I've made a video, but why not pick up again in December because I have so many fun December activities for the classroom to share with you guys. Oh no, I just realized my hat wasn't on. Oh, there we go. Oh, I need to take attendance. Hold that thought. Anyways, I have a whole list here that I made of just fun things that I do during December. And let me just start off by saying I teach math and science. That's all I teach. So before y'all come at me with the whole like I need to make my lessons more diverse and I only have Christmas activities. I just do these for fun quickly at the end of a lesson. I don't theme the whole thing around it. And my fabulous teaching partner, Rachel, who teaches our kids reading and social studies, she does more with the traditions and holidays around the world and all that fun stuff. So they are still learning all about that and getting some diverse lessons. But um, for math and science, it is kind of hard to find craftivities or little activities, especially if you're looking on Teachers Pay Teachers, um, that are anything but Christmas themed. So. I try and stick to the winter theme and do more like snowman or penguin stuff like that but a few of my things are christmas themed okay the first thing on my list if you follow me on instagram you've already seen this but i wrap 14 books or however many days that we're going to be at school in december and i put a little number on each one and then each day we get to open one and it's either a math slash stem book because the stem activities are super fun um, and it gives us a little something to do in the morning or it's just a book about like friendship or character building and on those days I just read it and we kind of discuss it real quick like a morning meeting type thing and then move on. But my kids love the STEM activities. I'll show you a few of the ones we've done so far just because they're sitting right here. But um, super cute STEM book just about like growth mindset and um, working as a team. Well, let's be a maker, love this book. That's pretty self-explanatory. This one, what floats in a moat, you can build little boats out of aluminum foil or pretty much anything really. Can I join your club? It's about friendship and um, differences. How to cold a roller coaster. This one we did yesterday and then we did Brooke Brown's little snowman coating activity, which they absolutely loved. And this one's cute too. I'm trying to love math. We did this one day and we just talked about why we struggle with math and how math helps us in life because this whole book is basically about how we use math every day and sometimes we don't even realize we're using it. And then these are three we did as well. Um, this is on my Instagram. It's basically, I just gave them a toilet paper roll and they went to town making all these little crafty things. Super cute, the book gives you all sorts of ideas. This one, do frogs drink hot chocolate, adorable and it's more about science, how different animals keep warm in the winter. Dolly 1.0 is about a little girl who loves technology and she turns this boring doll into a talking doll using coding and stem and all that kind of fun stuff all right now i'm going to share some craftivities because who doesn't love a good craftivity and these are so good to like hang around the room or hang out in the hallway just to kind of decorate these are not something that i would recommend for like an assessment or to gain um understanding of what your students know but it's just kind of like a cute craft sometimes we have extra time or sometimes it's like an early finisher thing so this first one is an adorable little reindeer i bought this one tpt the cool thing is it comes with different little light bulbs so these ones are multiplication and division but the lady who made it has like addition subtraction two digit all this different stuff so like last year we did this with two digit addition i think when i taught second grade but this year we did multiplication and division and they are so cute oh my gosh another little adorable one this little shape penguin this is from amy lemons and it comes with this paper here so basically the kids just identify each of the shapes so the body what shape it is how many sides how many vertices get some vocab in there but again these are great because you can hang them up and when you're lazy and december comes and goes you can leave them up for january too because they're just penguins Speaking of all these little craftivities, if you don't know what the unlock challenges are, then maybe you don't have a teacher Instagram, I don't know. But these little unlock challenges are so cute. I have a couple of them. This is the Christmas one, so it's like unlock the North Pole, but I try and make it more like wintry. So basically what you do is you have all these different like centers or stations and each one has an activity. On Teachers Pay Teachers, they come with like a little packet for second or third grade. They might have more grades on there too, I don't know. But I like to make it more like center based and do like craftivities. This year was super hard because I have virtual kids. So I had to make it all on like a Google slide. 
and link it to everything, which took forever. But basically, like, I just do a little reindeer color by number. That's one of them. That's my reindeer challenge. And this is another little activity that I made. This one says, I spy holiday graphing. So what they do is they look at the pictures up at the top and then they graph it and it comes with some questions. But this is on my TPT store. This is what it looks like when they're finished. They love it because it's kind of like a little game to them. The lights challenge, I totally just made this one up the other day because my kids are struggling with skip counting. So I just printed out some light bulbs and I wrote a different number at the top and they have to skip count by that number and then they're gonna string them all together. This is my example, I only did three, but they will have one through 10. Okay, this little Santa beard is so cute. I've made this a couple years now, but what they do is they have this little answer sheet, which is the beard, and then they cut these out and they answer these equations and they roll them up and then they glue them on here. So that's like little curled beard hair and they turn out so cute. I'll show you a picture. I'll try and put a picture like for right here if I'm capable of doing that, who knows. This headband is a little bit too much for me. I forgot I got these this year. A Dollar Tree, the little elf hats. The ears are not far enough forward, I feel like. Anyways, another graphing activity. If you have a thousand and one Dollar Tree or Target Dollar Spot mini erasers like I do, these are all like wintery Christmas theme. You can give each kid a little bin of them or a handful. You can tell them to grab a handful and then they can do the same kind of thing with this, but then they can sort them on the table because some kids get really confused with this and they miss um, a few of them. But this way, they can sort them and then graph them. I can't take myself seriously in that hat. But anyways, another super fun day that we do um, is Grinch Day. I love the Grinch and the kids loved it last year. Last year was the first time I went all out I made a ton of little like Whoville Grinch houses and I hung them in the hallway and a few in here. And then one of my centers was I wrapped a ton of little boxes or fake presents and they had equations on them. So they had to solve the equation and then deliver it to the house with that address, which was so cute. But this year, obviously I can't do that. So I'm gonna either have to make it virtual, like a drag and drop kind of thing or figure something out because they love Grinch Day. Next week, we're also making gingerbread houses, which is a math activity. I'm gonna read the book, Gingerbread Man, Loose in the School, I think it is. There's a whole bunch of them, it's like a series. And then I'm gonna make a little scavenger hunt, which obviously we cannot go do in real life, but they can just do it in their head or like, you know, like they'll think, oh, now he's in the library and then they'll open the clue for the library. So we'll do all that and then we're gonna decorate gingerbread houses. And the way that I'm gonna make it math is they have to make equations about each number of candy that they use. So for example, if they use 12 Skittles, then they have to make a e multiplication equation that the product is 12. So they would write like three times four equals 12. Hopefully it works out. Last year we did it with addition and subtraction and it was a little bit of a hot mess, I won't lie. But this year I feel like my kids are way more sharp and with it and it's multiplication. We've been doing this for like two months now. so. Two more really quick and easy things that I just made up this year on the fly because I needed a time filler for the kids at school was I let them cut out and make their own snowflakes, which obviously they loved because it was crafty and artsy and we don't have any specials this year. So I try and make a few little art projects throughout the week. Instead of snowflakes, we called them snow facts. And each little snowflake had a number at the top so they could write threes or something like that and then they had to write all their threes facts one through ten so one times three two times three and they just like put them around anywhere on the snowflake i said i was gonna hang them up i still need to do that but they turned out super cute and that same day we also made and also along with that super easy craft i printed out multiplication and division equations on little like tiny strips of paper so they had to answer them all first and then they had to cut them out and then they made like little chains out of them so i just used white and blue paper different shades of blue so that is more like wintry themed and we can still leave it up once christmas is over but i'm just gonna hang them from the ceiling and if i get that done before i edit this video i'll add in a picture but I definitely will add in a picture of the snowflakes right here because they turned out cute and they're so easy. It literally takes no prep. So, so if you need an early finisher or something, snowflake facts. The last category of things I wanted to talk about was STEM related because there are so many fun STEM things to do. I 
feel like it's a little bit of a struggle this year and I haven't really been as excited about it because we can't do a lot of them, but I've still seen people on Instagram or YouTube making it work. One example I saw was that people were making the little marshmallow catapults because they could send that home. So they just would wrap up hot chocolate, some marshmallows, popsicle sticks, rubber bands, and a spoon. And then they would like give their children directions on how to make it and it looks super cute. So that's one thing you could do. In the past, I've made this huge bulletin board full of all these STEM activities and we would do one a day, kind of like the books thing. And the kids loved it and they were all super easy. And since I did it year after year, I kind of had all the materials already. It's on my Teachers Pay Teacher store. I'll show you guys in a minute. But basically they were so easy, like little gingerbread houses that they could make out of any stem bin. Um, what was another one? Little Christmas trees out of straws, um, little science experiments where you, know, have, you have Santa's milk and you put the food coloring in and then you use the dish soap and it like disperses. Um, I can't think of any, let me show you guys. So that's what my bulletin board looked like. It's a little blurry because it's on my computer but it was just like a Christmas tree out of little gears and then each one of these was an envelope with a challenge in it. So this is what it was, holiday STEM countdown. Here's the numbers and let's see. Elf traps was one and we read a book with that one. So then I had some planning sheet, the Grinch heart where you put the little balloon on top of a water bottle and use baking soda and vinegar. Um, Dancing Jingle Bells, that was a cute one. It's super easy, you just put cranberries in Sprite and they like bounce up and down. Symmetry with snowflakes, we used marshmallows and toothpicks and they got, got to create one on their desk, they really liked that. Tinkering Trees, that was kind of hard. You have to buy a lot of nuts and bolts for them to do that one, so wouldn't recommend. Santa's Milk, that's the one I talked about earlier. Making a chimney for Santa using toothpicks, gumdrops, and a ruler. Um, Christmas cookie cutters. Oh yeah, that one was cute too. That's on Pinterest. You can totally look that up. Gingerbread Brill bridge. They had to build a bridge over this using any material. So just, oh, this one was cute too. All of the other reindeer. If you read that book and then you make him a little parachute using coffee filters and string. But yeah, just a ton of little STEM activities that were super easy to do in the morning. And it kind of put everyone in a good mood and set the tone for the day. December is a crazy month and you clearly do not have to do all this stuff, but I try and make it fun just because they're already crazy. Like December's crazy. They're excited for all the holidays coming up. You're excited for the break. So I just go with the flow and make it crazy and we have fun. So if you have any holiday activities that you think I'm missing out on or my students need, make sure you comment below and let me know so I can do them. But also if you want to see a lot of this stuff that I talked about today, um, kind of live or in action, then make sure you follow me on Instagram at Miss Curtis's Classroom because I post stories there or pictures from the day when we do all these activities. And also make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because hopefully I can get my life back together and start making more videos. I would like to do one where I talk about like each month and different like activities or fun things that's happening that month, but stay tuned. We'll see if that happens in January. <laughs>